and you add all of those things up and it becomes transformational for the client. Why haven't I heard about this? Well, guess what, John? If you're a multifamily owner, buying and selling investment real estate via 1031 exchange, guess who's making all the money? Well, you're hopefully making some money, right? But that broker is getting a huge commission. I'm a broker. I've sold nearly $100 million in multifamily investment real estate, mostly, mostly multifamily for my clients. And I own real estate myself. And with that, I know that there's a big commission, right? Uh, that's associated with every deal. So they don't want you to know about it. Likewise, the 1031 company, guess what? They don't want you to know about it either because they're in the business of holding your funds there to make a return. And so that's part of why you don't know about it. Also part of it is your CPA, just they're, they're not a specialist in this installment sale. They know about carry back, right? Which is IRC 453, which is the basis of our structure, by the way, it goes back to the 1920s. Um, that's how and why it's legal. By the way, during the audits, that's what the IRS said. They said, huh, you guys are doing something really creative. I mean, you guys do something really simple here. You're being creative with, with the installment sale, but all you're doing is an installment sale, which is known as a seller carry back. You, you have this third party trust that's coming in and, and, they're, and they're, they're, they're buying the position and they're selling it to the ultimate buyer. And because the seller's carrying back 100% financing, by the way, that's what happens. You become the lender in this scenario. Uh, it looks like uh, you guys you guys are good. No change audit, not one single issue. So the legality's there, the track record's there, but the key is more than just, just the actual strategy. It's actually the business professionals and the team aspect. This is this is important part of the, the theme of the, of the show. It's the team of professionals that's gonna help you execute the business plan. So we actually work with the 1031 companies. We have QI companies that work with us, give both options. We have the commercial real estate brokers who, who have joined us. We've done deals with Marcus and Millichap, we've done deals with Keller Williams, we've done deals all over the US. And we actually bring them all in. And another way to think about it is like the 1031, John, at a certain point, you didn't know about the 1031, maybe 20 years ago, you didn't know about it. And then somebody brought it to you and you said, oh my gosh, I was just buying and selling property and deferring the tax. Well, it's the same thing here. Think of it like the old, the 1031 though, it's like the old blockbuster. It used to be an old way of doing things. You'd go to Blockbuster and you'd check out a movie and you'd have to return it, right? You'd have this short time frame, and then within within three days, if you don't return, you get the penalty and all, you know, they had all their rules and their ways to make money. And that's what the 1031 is. Well, there's a new way and it's called Netflix, right? And you sign up for a subscription and you get all this flexibility and you get all this freedom. That's what the deferred sales trust is like. It's like the Netflix to the Blockbuster. And it just gives you tons of freedom and flexibility. And the point I'll touch on right here too is the second part of the secret, which is essentially for creating, for creating an optimal timing transfer, transformational wealth plan. Back to these baby boomers. They want to be retired from the toilets to trash the liability. They want their time and their energy. They've created and preserved all this wealth and they don't necessarily need to create more. They just need to figure out a way to how to transfer it to the next generation, which is our generation, without getting completely wiped out. But how do they solve those two gaps using a 1031? It's, it, it's, it's very challenging. Well, this is where the deferred sales trust comes in. Not only do we get them out of complete debt, right? So they're debt free because we don't have to replace equal or greater value, but also we don't have to go into light kind real estate. In fact, we can put it into uh, John's deal. John might have a syndication deal, right? A small portion, we could put it into hard money lending. They can put it into the stock market, okay? Uh, if they want to. I'm not a big stock market guy. I'm a multifamily uh, commercial real estate guy, but if they want, some people want that and they can put it in very conservative stuff. The point is they can diversify their wealth and complete completely passive, truly passive from having to deal with the day-to-day -day operations and management. And then this thing can pass to their kids all as well, all tax deferred and the kids can step into their position. And so I want you to think about the deferred sales trust like a, like a, like a box. And that box is the place where your, your, your assets, as they sell, the proceeds go into them. Okay. And they accumulate, okay. Into this place where now you can put it like a self-directed IRA into multiple syndications, multiple asset types, all tax deferred at any time out of debt. And you add all of those things up and it becomes transformational for the client versus just a transaction where you're just selling one property for another in a short period of time and all of the restrictions that the 1031 uh, has. So I'll pause there because I know I said a lot and you may have some questions or thoughts.